Good morning. Mommy, do a mohawk and sitting in the Which one did you put in? That one smells good. Aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> this looks good, Rich. Every day they train, they're training, they're training, they're training, they're putting their bodies under whatever they got to put their bodies on because they're, they're, they have they they need resistance. They're, they're trying to get to a certain place. They're trying to look a certain way. They're trying to, you know, tone it, cut it, buff it, whatever they're trying to do, right? And so they're going to go the distance. They're going to go to the point where it's almost muscle failure because they are trying to get the most out of it. When you press, you've got to make sure that you get the most out of it because you are going somewhere. And while you're going somewhere, you've got to watch it. Watch what you do. You just can't be mentally strong. You've got to be emotionally strong, spiritually strong, financially strong. You have to be strong in these areas because if you are not, here is where the enemy comes in. And if you got skeletons in your closet, if you got issues already, if you got stuff dealing with your flesh, then what the enemy's going to do, he's going to make sure that you don't make it because he's going to use those areas in your life that you have overlooked, that you have not paid attention to, that you have neglected, that you have not dealt with. Or there is, for some say, no closure. And so he, these are areas in your life the enemy has to use to keep you from pressing. You know, that's like when you're trying to go somewhere, you got the wind, you got the wind coming against you. And while the wind's coming against you, right, the, enemy, the wind is trying to slow you down. So you got resistance. And sometimes resistance is good. It is good. Because you need things to come against you. You need things to happen in your life. You need to find out about people. You need to find out about situations. You need to discover things because if you don't discover them, you won't know how to deal with them. You won't know what God's word says about them. So you need first God's word to give you instructions about things because things and people are going to come. And when they do come, God is simply saying to you, this is what I want you to understand. You cannot let people, things, situations, circumstances, feelings, emotions separate you from me. Because they are going to come. They are going to distract you. You're going to feel a certain way this day. You're not going to be there. You're almost like you're not going to be feeling it that day. You're almost like, well, I don't know this day. All the different things that come. And, and, but the enemy has to make sure he keep you in your feelings. Okay. In your feelings, somebody got on your nerves, somebody made you mad, somebody made you sad. Oh man, this didn't go the way it should have went. This didn't happen like it should have happened. Uh, enemy, if enemy can get up in there any way he came to distract you and get you off focus, you will lose time. You will lose time. Because that's what he has to do. He has to make sure that you ain't paying attention to what you really need to be paying attention to. So if you look out here in the world, all you got in the world now is distractions. That's all you got. Because the enemy don't want people to really see what's going on. <laughs> That's the whole thing, man. That's a military move. That's strategic, man. 
you got to keep people in the dark as long as you can so they never come to know God's eternal plan. Like I said, mesmerized, hypnotized, and paralyzed so they don't realize what's happening. And why they don't realize what's happening, right? This is where you get them. This is where they become prisoners of war or casualties of war. But here's the reality. People don't believe this. People don't believe in the spirituality. They don't believe that, that the enemy is real. They don't believe what's coming against them. They don't believe in because they say there's so many gods and so many ways you can go. And so here is the enemy is distracting. The enemy is using religion now to separate, right, and to segregate because they don't they interpret interpreted according to how they feel, how they think, what they've seen, their cultures, their demographics, and different things, society, politics, and everything else have, have defined uh, the Word of God. Instead of the Word of God defining your culture, defining your situation, your circumstance, they got it backwards. And so Paul, when he was addressing the Philippian church, he said, I'm going somewhere. I don't know where you're going. I, I don't know. I can't speak for you. I can't run for you. I can't pray. For you, in other, words, in other words, I can't pray and you don't pray. In other words, I can't do the prayers myself. I can't, I don't know where you are. So what I've got to do, I've got to focus. Whether you go or not, I've got to make it. I've got to make it. And that's why we said before, he that endured to the end. He, she, they, him, her, I. Okay? You've got to make it. I can't speak for you. You can't, you can't come off my coat. You can't wear my mama made it, I'm going to make it. If my daddy make it, I'm going to make it. You're going to pull me in. I can't pull you in. <laughs> oh, no. You've got to go for it like I go for it, too. You've got to go hard after like I go hard after. You, you've got to seek God yourself. You've got to pray yourself. You can encourage people all day long. You can give them the word all day long. But if they don't see the need to go after God and press toward God and the enemy see that you're not doing that, now you let the enemy know that you ain't about nothing. And he knows how to slow you down because you showed your hand. And often, as said before, like in poker, you can't show your hand until it's a winning hand. You got to keep the, you got to keep the enemy guessing about you. He, he, he got to keep him guessing. Well, you know, because you you hide yourself in God. You you keep yourself in God. And when things happen, right, you don't trip. And once you trip, now the enemy knows how to keep tripping you. Because now you don't show them your hand. You don't show. Oh, I know how to get her. Say this and trigger a nerve and watch you go off on the what? On the left end somewhere. Why watch you go overboard? Because you showed them your hand. You, that's what you just did. Because the enemy has to find out where you are too. And so what he would do? He would try things in your life, man, that you have not covered, that you have not dealt with, that you have that you hide, tried to hide. They say skeletons in the closet and different things like that, right? And a lot they say a lot of everybody got skeletons in the closet. That's not true because they're not scripted correct. You ain't got to have no skeletons in the closet. What you got in the closet? But you need to come out the closet when you throw them away, you need to get rid of them. Because why in the closet, what that mean? And anytime they can come out. And why he knows these things about you, he has to keep you from reaching your maximum potential. He has to keep you from coming after God or going after God from pressing toward the mark. That's all, boss. I, I, I love, I'll tell you what. I'm going to try to encourage y'all in the church. He said, I'm praying for y'all in the church. He said, I'm, I'm going to give y'all a word. I'm going to preach it. I'm going to do like God told me to do. But I can't run this race for you. And I'm sorry. I, I just can't do it. I, I got to run it for myself. I, I got to make sure I cross the finish line. I got to make sure I live holy. I got to make sure that I walk right before the Lord. I got to make sure that I seek the face of God. I got to make sure that I'm in my word. I got to make sure that I'm praying. I got to make sure that I'm worshiping God and giving God praise and glory and honor that rightfully belongs to Him. I got to make sure that I'm not hypocriting. I'm not saying something and not doing it myself because people are good at talking a whole lot of noise. They're good at saying something or quoting scriptures, but a lot of times people do half of what they say. It just sounds good to the ear. It's just scripture quoting. That's all it is. People saying something, but I'll tell you what, they're not actually doing what they said that they're doing because there's no way that you get close to God and remain the same. There's no way that you can draw near to God and God don't draw near to you and God don't start telling you that you need to lay aside this, you need to lay aside that because you're trying to go somewhere. And who you going to contend with the most is going to be your flesh. What do you mean your flesh? Because we don't like to be told nothing. We don't even like to listen to God either. <laughs> Believe it or not, we don't like God even telling us nothing. Because we so much into ourselves, our selfies. We so much want to do it our way. Because the Bible said when you come to God, your mind has to be renewed because the way y'all think don't work. You're 60, and here you got the same problem that you had that you were 20 because you never got closure. Because y'all thinking is all off. And while you think like you do, you'll never get, be able to reach your maximum potential. 
So God is constantly trying to tell y'all, tell us, right, that his way is better than our way. That's all he's saying. That your thoughts are not like my thoughts. So y'all can't, you can't bring me down to you guys. You've got to come up to where I am. If you reach up to me, then I'll reach down to you. And he's going to reach down to you, right, and then he's going to reach out from you like a cross, vertical, then horizontal. So simply God lets us know that if you're going to make it, you're going to have to press. Just like you can go after things in the natural and deny yourself, then why come you can't come after me and deny yourself? Because the things that you're accustomed to are more realer than me. Because you can't see me, and you really don't see no reward like you may think you see in the natural. So what it is, you, wait, you, 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 you compare the two and decided that, that this one is more important than that one. And God takes too long, and God is not a reality, but this is a reality, when all actuality, what you think is a reality, is not really real at all. God is more real than anything we will ever experience in life. Because things come and people come and people go. God ain't going nowhere. And even you will go. But God ain't going nowhere. He remains the same because Scripture says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I change not. But we're the ones that got to change, though. The Bible says, from glory to glory, from faith to faith, we have to grow up in Him and realize, like a song we used to sing a lot of times, that, uh, how'd it go? I don't know if y'all heard this song before, but it's an old, old song. Oh, when I was when I first got saved in Germany, <laughs> when, I, when I got saved not in, in Germany, right? And we used to sing the song a lot of times in the choir. And it goes like this. Let me just try to remember. My, my mind's made up. I'm on my way up. Gonna hold my head up. Yeah, going on with the Lord. Yeah, that's what it was. Oh, my mind's made up. Um, on my, we used to sing this song. Um, we used to sing this in the choir back no, in Germany. Yeah, I don't know who that's. I don't know. No, that, that's the song. We come along. We come along. Let's sing it, y'all. Going on with the Lord. Right come on. Uh -huh. Y'all get it. Y'all get it. I'm made up. 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 I'm
And it's almost like a computer is downloaded. Your spirit, what happens, it, 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 it does what it does. I'm telling you, it will do what it will do. And this is a part of your pressing toward the mark. Because you've got to make sure, I'm telling you, you have to make sure that you make it. I'm trying to go somewhere. I, I want to go somewhere. It's like if you want to go to the store or whatever it is, right? You, you're going to get in your car and you're going to do what you do. You're going to go to the store because you got an objective. You're going to the store. You're going to do what you're going to do, right? The same thing with God. When your mind is made up, here you go. When your mind is really made up, I'm going to tell you now from experience. It's been a long time with God. When your mind is made up, I'm going to tell you right now, after a while, you ain't going to let nothing separate you. Because now you've got to a point in your relationship with God that you don't want to be separated now. You don't want it. You don't want nothing to come to your relationship with God. You just don't want anything or anybody. You just want to make sure I'm doing everything God I'm supposed to do like I'm supposed to do it. Help me, God. Help me because I, I got to make it. I got to do it. I, I can't just get caught up in this. I can't get mesmerized by stuff. I, I can't get my feelings into stuff. I can't let people get into my head. I can't stop. I can't let all these voices get up in there and got me going all crisscross applesauce. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've got to make sure I'm doing it God's way. I've got to make sure I'm hearing what the Spirit has to say. And it's hard to hear God when you got other people in your head. That's why Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And a stranger. See, you got to know who the strange voices are. Because if not, those strange voices are going to tell you to do stuff that you got in the business doing. Because you're not accustomed to hearing the shepherd's voice. You've got to know his voice. That means you've got to spend time with him. You got to meditate. You got to be quiet, so you get accustomed to hearing God's voice. Now here goes the question: What does God's voice sound like? I don't know what it sounds like to you, because our relationships are different. That's why you got to establish a relationship with God. And really, God speaks out of His Word. I'm going to tell you now: God's not going to say nothing outside of His Word because it's going to be right there in His Word because He watches over His Word to perform it. And He says, "The Word does not return from void, but it comes to what it's sent out to do, and prosper into the thing where it is sent." So God's going to speak out of His Word. That's why you're going to have to know what He is saying. That's why you're going to have to study because if you don't study, somebody's going to tell you something that's not in that Word, and they do it every day. Every day they do it. Tell them folks to do stuff that God never did and said. God, no, nah, I ain't what he said, but they tell you that he did it, swept it down, and God told me to tell you this. How do you know? If you don't know God's word for yourself, if you don't have the spirit of God operating in your life, if you're not a relational, but how are you going to know and they can make it sound so like it is God and put all the color with it, all the theatrics with it, all the sound, the lights, the camera, and the action, and you will be hollering and screaming. Don't know what you're hollering and screaming for. <laughs> because it sounds, right here, it sounds good, but everything that sounds good ain't good. And everything that you see good really ain't good. So you've got to know what is good and what is not. And the only way you're going to know that, <laughs> you know, you had to get a hold of God for that. I'm sorry. Because you can't let people tell you, because if you let people talk telling you stuff, then what's going to happen? Every time something happens, you're going to go back to that same person. But what did God say about this? What did God say? You don't know? No. Then until you find out, you better keep yourself still. Then. You better not move. Until you find out, don't you move. Stand still, the Bible says, see the salvation of God. Be still and know that I am God. Because other than that, if you go out there and you may cause something to happen that may delay you for 10 years of your life and keep you 10 years out because you decided, I can't wait on the Lord. <laughs> God, just take it too long. Oh, my God. God. But it seems long to us because where we spend most of our time at. Um, I'm going to make a comment. <laughs> go ahead, right? I meant to say don't stop earlier. <laughs> Hopefully, people take it right, the right way. What happened? No, when I said it earlier, I said that's it. I'm going to say don't stop. Oh, I know, we know. Okay. <laughs> we got you. We got you there. We got you. We got you. Uh, keep that hunger and thirst. And the scripture says, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And all of that is saying, if there's no hunger, if there's no thirst, you won't be filled. That's all. You won't be filled. And a lot of people eat, they say, I'm full. I'm full now. I'm full. You will eat. When you spiritually eat, <laughs> you should let God fill you, right? And then let it overflow. Well, throughout life, you're going to find you're going to constantly keep getting fed because things going to happen. It's going to try to take away from you or whatever it's going to take away from you. And that's why you need to constantly find something for the Lord. Because the Lord can constantly feel you.
Feel me, feel me, and feel me. That means you got to eat at the table of the Lord every day like you eat at your own table every day. It's like you don't deny yourself natural things. Don't deny God either. Give God what belongs to Him. If you give God what belongs to Him, then He'll give you what belongs to you. Who's going to close us out there? Who's going to bring it in for us? All oh, y'all hands should be going up. You know why? <laughs> Every hand should be like, I just prayed oh, last night. <laughs> I did just pray last night. You didn't pray in group. See, hold, hold up. Let me, let me, now see, that, that was, you see right there? Now let me share. That's, that's it. That right there? Shout it out. You know I hate praying out loud. I know, I know, I know. I know. I'm just saying, see, when, when there's a hunger and thirst for God like that, and somebody, man, y'all hands should be, all, all hands should be on that. Like, oh, I, got this well, I wanted to hear everyone's prayer, so I haven't heard her yet. Have you ever heard Kiki pray? No. I just prayed. <laughs> <laughs> she heard y'all. Yeah, I heard this. You ever heard Jennifer? I heard Okay, then we're going to do it like this, then. We're going to do it like this. But next time, when something like that happens, because again, this is part of your trip, everybody say pray, just jump in. Don't, 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 don't stagger. Don't stagger. It doesn't matter if you pray last time you prayed five minutes ago. Jump in that thing because when you show God how hungry you're hungry and thirsty you are, that's how God rewards. God said, oh man, I can't even get you to pray. Man, you should be jumping. I got this. I got this. Oh, hold on. Where did I, can, I, can I pray? It'd be like, can I pray? Can I close out? Like sometimes uh, they be doing, can I close out? Can I close out? That's what I'm that, that should be a thing that should excite you. Pray out. Oh, I got this. Let me, let me get it. Can, matter of fact, before you start, can I pray? It'd be like, you should come to the person. Can I pray this time? This is the hunger that you got to have and the thirst that you have to have. You've got to have that type of excitement for God. When it comes to God, it's like you be fighting to go first. You got to have it. Because if not, you're not going to make it. So, who's it? So they well, you, you going for it? I didn't say that yet. <laughs> no, I was talking about Okay, I tell you what, because this is training, I think it was training. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. There you go. There you go. I'm going to help you all out. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And go ahead. There you go. Go ahead. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for today. We thank you for waking us all up this morning. We thank you for letting you for sharing work with all of us to hear. And I pray that you help us in our studies. And I pray that you help us to go after you. And I pray that you protect us throughout the day. And you're just sweet to say amen. So be it. Like that. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning and watching over us as we sleep. Thank you for all the things that you're going to do in our lives. Let us have a great day and watch over us for the rest of the day. Thank you for allowing Julie to share with us and let us all receive the word that you have for us. In your sweet son Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> yeah. great, great. <laughs> you're getting a whole lot better, Kiki. Okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Emotional too. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us all together today and um, giving us your daily bread. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be able to be allowed today to receive it, help us to apply it, and just never pray. So be it. Yeah, you come, you coming all the way to Miss B. Go ahead, girl. Go ahead. Y'all, y'all got to have the exposure, and sometimes y'all need to be put on the spot. Something had to put on the spot. God sometimes will put you on the spot. I don't want to hear it. Go ahead. I don't hear it. But a lot of times, when, to before, in training, I don't hear on. You got to believe God's able to speak in you and then speak through you, too. You don't compare yourself with nobody else. I, I ain't been as long as you have. They ain't got to do it. You go ahead and give out what you got. And try to pray like your mommy ain't. Try to pray like me. So you make him pray better than us. <laughs> you go <laughs> pray like God give it to you. Now, it's hard to catch up with somebody doing it. For, for most of their life, I'm going to tell you right now, it's hard to catch it up. But it's a possibility. It's a possibility. It's a hard to catch what's hard to do as long as this. No, no, Especially when they're full of scriptures and they just come like. Is <laughs> 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 that yeah, because I studied a lot? Study? I'm, no. And that's with time in. That's all this is, is time in. That's all it is. Time in pays off. Time in. So down, you can endure stuff. You can hold on. You can stay in the middle. Because even, even in your stuff that you messed up, even in your own disobedience that you had towards God, even in our own falls or fall, fall away from God and not listening to God, all that came together to make you better, stronger, and wiser. So then you'll say she's scared mm -hmm. because it's storming outside. Like, um, it's getting really dark. And as you see, it's really dark in here. A dinner, we had Papa John's, 
The brownies are so good. We have the Parmesan and garlic beans, the honey chipotle and my husband and I had my husband and I had the barbecue and bacon one and I had the um, Philly cheese steak and we just gave each other half of each other's half of each other's half of each other's half of each other's each other's half of 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 each Shack thing. Hey, how you doing? Okay, so we tried the Shackalicious Shackle or something. What it was called? Oh, it's like Shack. I forgot Shack what it was. Something. What are you doing, Cecilia? <laughs> I like the edges. Do it, Cecilia. No, you're wrong, Daniel. Look, why what are you, you doing? Like Show me. Cecilia, do this. Go ahead, Cecilia. Mommy, look, 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 record me doing it. <laughs> She's like a chin man. <laughs> Daddy, <something> <laughs> Ever since my brother was a bomb and now I'm detonating. No, you can't relate. You just can't relate. Every day I wake up like a boss and I'll be thinking Jesus.